leave. Let's talk about visceral uh, leishmaniasis. This is also known as black fever. Leishmaniasis is caused by a parasitic protozoa uh, of the genus uh, Leishmania. Humans are infected uh, via the bite of the phlebotomine sandflies. Sandflies are able to bite humans uh, and exchange blood products uh, from the human and the sandfly's gut. So humans are infected with the bite of the phlebotomine sandflies, which breed in forest areas, caves, uh, and burrows of small rodents. There are four types, four major types of leishmaniasis. Cutaneous leishmaniasis uh, results in skin ulcers. These usually form on exposed areas such as the face, arms, and legs. These usually heal within a few months, leaving scars. Diffuse cutaneous leishmaniasis produces disseminated and chronic skin lesions that are very similar to those of leprosy. This is a very for a difficult form of leishmaniasis to treat. Mucocutaneous leishmaniasis results in lesions that partially or totally destroy the mucous membranes of the nose, the mouth, the throat, cavities of surrounding tissues. Visceral leishmaniasis, also known as Kala Azar, is characterized by high fever, substantial weight loss, swelling of the spleen, liver, and bone marrow suppression. Here is someone suffering from visceral leishmaniasis, and we can percuss using sound to demonstrate the size of the liver and the size of the spleen. They have that drawn on the picture. Uh, just to let you know, uh, this is the size of the liver in this person, uh, and this is the size of the spleen from the side. Visceral leishmaniasis is the second largest parasitic killer in the world after malaria. Visceral leishmaniasis is responsible for an estimated 50,000 deaths each year worldwide. Visceral leishmaniasis is usually fatal if not treated. Over 90,000 new cases occur in six countries, Bangladesh, Brazil, Ethiopia, India, South Sudan, and Sudan. If you go to the Center for Disease Control website and look up anything that I've talked about, they'll have plenty of great information. And here is uh, a diagram of the life cycle of uh, the Leishmania uh, protozoa. So let's go through this and see if we can make any sense of this. So we'll start here on the cycle. Here on the cycle, the sandflies inject the infective stage of the Leishmania, uh, and those are called promastigotes. They inject those into the human. The promastigotes are motile, meaning they move, uh, flagellated, the little flagella. And so the promastigotes are modal, motile, flagellated forms of the Leishmania. We'll move over here to the diagram and go through that. So after the fly injects the promastigotes into the human, they are phagocytized by the macrophages. Remember in immunology, we had macrophages come and eat organisms. The macrophages come and eat the promastigotes that are injected by the fly. So the promastigotes will transform into the tissue stage of the Leishmania parasite, and we call those amastigotes. So amastigotes, promastigotes, two major terms to keep in mind when you're talking about Leishmania. These amastigotes multiply by simple division and proceed to infect other mononuclear phagocytic cells. You guys recognize this? So this is a bone marrow biopsy. And so here we see a mononuclear uh, macrophage, and it is full of amastigotes. And they multiply by simple division and proceed to infect other mononuclear cells. So that's what we see right here in the cycle. 
uh, the mastagotes will multiply and be released from the macrophages uh, to be taken up by other macrophages. And so this is how they spread inside of the human. So we'll move over here. Sand flies become infected by ingesting infected cells during blood meals. In sand flies, the amastigotes transform into promastigotes. So here are the amastigotes being taken in by the sand fly, released from the macrophage, and they transform in the sand fly in the gut into promastigotes. And we'll look at this part of the cycle right here. The Leishmania promastigotes will migrate to the mouth, the proboscis of the sand fly to be injected back into the human. So that is the cycle of the parasite Leishmania. And you'll notice that all the life cycles of the protozoa are very difficult to talk about. And that's what makes these diseases very difficult to treat because the, the protozoa undergo so many different changes. There's all sorts of different types of Leishmania, factors in the host and other factors as well that affects whether the infection becomes symptomatic and whether that infection results in a cutaneous infection or a visceral uh, Leishmaniasis. Here pictured is a bone marrow biopsy with a monocytic phago, uh, phagocytic cell that's infected uh, with amastigotes. So we can take tissue specimens from the skin sores uh, in cutaneous leishmaniasis or from bone marrow biopsies as is, as is the case with visceral leishmaniasis. And these can be examined for parasites under a microscope. They can be treated with special cultures. They can be treated in other ways as well. We can do blood serological testing to detect antibodies to the parasite. This can be helpful, especially in cases of visceral leishmaniasis. Serologic testing is much more frequently used in areas where leishmaniasis is endemic. And here pictured is the K39 dipstick test. It's for anybody who's ever seen a pregnancy test used. Anybody who's ever seen a urine dipstick used, uh, we can take a blood sample, we can take a serum sample, put this on the K39 dipstick and test for, uh, test for the presence of leishmaniasis. So the K39 dipstick test is easy to perform. Uh, village health workers can easily be trained to use it. The kit can be stored at normal temperatures or ambient temperatures and no additional equipment needs to be carried to remote areas. So delivering K39 dipstick tests to endemic regions is something of interest. The effort to eradicate visceral leishmaniasis. Pentavalent antimonial compounds have been the mainstay of treatment since the 1940s. Sodium stibogluconate pentastam, something available for, from the CDC for the treatment of visceral leishmaniasis. The standard dose is 20 milligrams of the SBV, SB5 compound per kilogram of patient weight. This can be administered IV or IM. The traditional duration of therapy can be anywhere from 20 to 28 days depending on the severity of the disease. Miltifazine is considered the first highly active oral agent for visceral leishmaniasis. Availability of this drug is very difficult. It's very difficult to obtain this drug. Miltifazine is contraindicated in pregnancy and its use in women of reproductive age requires a negative pregnancy test and an effective contraceptive method during treatment and for the three months after therapy. Uh, so we do not want to use this drug. We do not want to use miltifazine in pregnant women or women who can become pregnant within three months of therapy. So this is a category X drug. There are other drugs that are in different stages of development for the treatment of visceral leishmaniasis. Uh, liposomal amphotericin B, uh, ambazone amphotericin B 
is an antifungal agent that's commonly available in different forms, both topically and IV. Uh, and suspending it in a fat solution, uh, liposomal, uh, gives it special characteristics. Paramomycin is an aminoglycoside that can be used for the treatment of visceral leishmaniasis. And the various azoles, ketoconazole, uh, itraconazole, and fluconazole are various azoles that can be used in the treatment of visceral leishmaniasis.